Gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, today I want to do a quick and dirty tutorial on the Doble F6150 and Protection Suite. Uh, I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of videos using Protection Suite uh, to, to show you some of the processes that I run through and sort of the, the, the logical leaps that I make to test the relays uh, that we're going to talk about in the rest of the series. I've already got a couple of them filmed already, which is going to... Uh, <laughs> Doing these out of order, I sort of recognize that I'm skipping a lot of like the basic information that you guys might not have. So this is sort of a prerequisite for the videos that I've already shot. I don't know what order I'm going to upload them in. So this is probably going to be episode like two or three or maybe four. And then you're just going to have a whole bunch of uh, me fumbling through testing <laughs> testing relays and you'd be watching over the shoulder as we actually test the relays. But I want to give you guys a primer on what uh what i'm doing and some of the things that i don't explain in those more hands-on videos so this is like a very basic uh hands-on tutorial about protection suite specifically protection suite version 5.3.1 um, so i can't really help you get licensed and set up for it you need to go through your company if you already have a double uh account set up uh, super quick editor's note here I, uh, I shot this video back in february and sort of rambled my way through it quickly it's now July, and I'm finally getting around to uh, editing and posting this. So um, I do want to say really quick, I just got written permission from an executive at Doble. Huge shout out to them. They don't have to do that. It's it's their software, and they could send me a cease and desist if they wanted to. But uh, they were kind enough to, to give me permission to make and publish this video to share it with you guys. So uh, huge shout out to them. The, they didn't give me any creative notes or talking points or anything like that. It's, this is my opinion, this is my workflow using their software. This is not formal Doble training. This is not a substitute for uh, the actual training. Um, like I said, they also didn't give me any, any talking points or tell me to do anything in specific. I, I give you an honest, uh, an honest review of all the equipment that I talk about and all the software that I use. Um, I, I've been using it for a long time, and I, I definitely wouldn't be using it if it slowed my, my workflow down at all. It's, it's good software. It's good hardware. So, uh, again, shout out to Doble. Thank you for letting me uh, post the video, and enjoy. I uh, hope you guys find this useful. Thanks. Without any further ado, I'm going to assume that you've got a basic background uh, of what relays are and why we test them and how to not light them on fire. Uh, and how not to shock yourself and kill yourself while you're out on a substation. Those are those are the prerequisites. Those are the assumptions that we make. Uh, and the final assumption is that you've got access to Doble and either Protection Suite version four or version five. So let's launch the software. Uh, you're greeted with a page like this. Make sure that your name is on it because the name, the username that you log in with or you register with, that's actually what's going to show up on your reports when you go to print the reports. So make sure that that's correct. Um, the file structure on here, this throws people off a lot. Uh, so the way that this works is you're going to select the, it's a little bit goofy. Normally you're going to have this on like your field service laptop that you take out with you in the field. Uh, so you would select like a, your projects folder. So like all of your projects should be, you know, sorted <laughs> in some sort of folder, hopefully not just your desktop and scattered all over the place, but you're going to want a, a, a relay testing projects folder. And then that is the folder that you're going to select. So I see here, this is my videos folder because I'm shooting videos, but I've got like my IAC. Um, and then I've actually got an IAC PSX file, the, the test file in here, but you can't see it. This is just folders. You can't actually see the individual files or the programs or anything like that. Um, so what we're going to do to navigate to it, select, when you're selecting this, you're going to select your projects folder. For me, it's testing tech tips, just what I call it. Um, and then we're going to select the folder, and then you're going to get a, a tree in protection suite. So from here, we're going to select, okay, uh, include all subfolders, right? And so here's my IAC, and here's my BE1. So I have those two PSX folders. If we were to hit this little down arrow and navigate to the folder that it's in, you can't see it, right? So when we go back to our main projects folder and select that folder, 
I can then select, okay, so maybe this is one project or this is, you know, one substation or one maintenance cycle or something like that. You would select that over here on this little tray, uh, oh, sorry, on this little menu tree right here. It throws people off. Once you get used to it, it's really not too bad. Um, as long as you have include subfolders checked, you'll be able to see everything in your main projects folder, right? If you uncheck that, you actually have to navigate to the individual folder that those files are in. Up top, we've got a couple, the, the two tabs are sort of layered, right? So you've got the, like our, our big picture tabs up here. So this is uh, relay device. Um, this is our test plan tab. This is the individual test tabs of like what we're actually working on. And then as we select through each of these, the sub menus are in a second layer of tabs underneath that, if that makes sense. So that's kind of cool. Um, things that you need to be aware of, I guess, on this top ribbon, um, the help tab, this is where you'd put in your, uh, your license, um, your, your registration number, uh, when you're registering a software, if you go from one company to another, or you're like upgrading from one version of protection suite to another, and you need a new, um, license key, this is where you'd put it in. I'm trying to think there's nothing super important that we need to look at on here. Um, Auto save. This is actually kind of a nice thing. Get this set up right away. Uh, auto save after every test. So as long as you have, when you make the new test file, every time you run a test, it saves the result and all of the changes that you made to that test plan. So that's that's super nice. I always recommend having that one on. Um, that's really the only big one I would worry about. So let's yeah, let's start from scratch. So we. Uh, we go here and we're going to click new. And so we're going to create and open a new relay transducer PMU file. So that's, that's generally what I do from scratch. It's most of the videos that I'm going to show you, I'll make a new relay test plan from scratch. So, uh, it kicks us to the relay device, like main tab. And then the sub tab, we're going to have all these things down here. Um, obviously on our nameplate information, all of this shows up on the report when we're done. So I definitely want to have uh, as much information in here as I possibly can. And I'll show you an example real quick in my IAC. Um, on my nameplate tab, I put in as much information as, as possible. Uh, if you're doing like a transform relay at a substation, I would put in the, the protected apparatus, put in all the details for the the big, the GSU or the transformer that you're working on, put as much of this information as you can. It makes your reports look a lot cleaner. Uh, it's going to make it a lot easier to join relays to apparatus out in the field, especially if you do that. Um, so I'm a big fan of that. As soon as you make any edits, so if you're if you're filling this out for the first time, definitely as soon as you're done putting the nameplate information in, you're going to click save as, and then pick the folder that you want to save it to. In this case, I've, I've already saved this one. This is my IAC, so that'll be in my IAC folder. There's that PSX file. Um, PSX is the, the, the file type for Protection Suite. So that looks good. The next tab, ooh, when I did this tutorial for the IAC, I didn't put a name for my test plan. Uh, you can really name your test plans whatever you want. I typically just name them like either acceptance and then the year or maintenance and then the year, something basic like that. So this will be maintenance, if I could spell, uh, 2024. Uh, if you got any comments like, oh, this is after we did a retrofit or something like that, you can put that there. That'll be fine. Um, device name. So I named this uh, really bench IAC because I tested on my bench over here. I don't know. Just make it as put as much detail as you can, especially uh, if you're doing something for a third party customer. So if you're working for a utility, this might be a little bit different. But if you're working for like a third party customer, if you're a, a NIDA testing company specifically, um, having your reports be super, super detailed is really important because right? they don't actually pay you to test the stuff. They typically just pay you to check the box for insurance. They really want the paperwork. They want the report. They don't give a crap what you actually do in the field. Like, sometimes they do. I mean, don't, don't, don't cheese it. But at the end of the day, they're paying you for the report. So the report needs to be super detailed. Um, the next sub tab over, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. You can skip everything in this tab. If you want to use the like default values, you can totally do that. I skip this tab over completely. 
Uh, protection settings, as we can see here, so this is for an IAC relay, it's an electromechanical. There's not a whole lot of settings to it. Um, if this is like an SEL 751 or a you know a 387 or a, a G8 series relay or something like that, where you can do multiple settings groups, they do sort of break this out so you can have a global settings group here up top, and you can have your group one settings, and then you can select and do uh, group two, group three, whatever, if it's got multiple settings group, or like a recloser that's got like hotline tag and the protection is going to be different between settings group one and settings group two. You can do all of that in there. That's kind of cool. Generally, probably 95 plus percent of the time, uh, you're only going to have one set. So it doesn't necessarily matter. You could put all of them, all of your group one settings and your global settings in just the global or you could put them all in group one and just leave group one active it's typically what i do uh for the most most of my tutorials here we're going to be trying to keep it kind of simple so we're going over like the concepts um generally i'll just throw everything in the global protection settings um the other honorable mention if you're doing something with a time over current curve or like a over voltage curve or something like, like a, a time over voltage curve um that will be in protection functions so let's go back to our new test plan, right? So our new relay. So we just made a new relay file. This is not my IAC that I had opened a second ago. We'll put in some protection settings. So say I've got a, uh, a pickup, I'll call that tap. And these are just settings, right? So we're gonna put this in uh, PS variable name. You can put it in device setting name, but then you also have to give it a variable that we can call back to later. Um, if you're copying and pasting like a huge, well, a huge whack of settings straight out of a relay, you can do that. If you've got a lot of automated functions, it works great. For the basics, I'm just gonna show you how to manually input them for now. Maybe I'll talk about that in a later video. Anyway, this is going to be essentially a variable that we can call later. So instead of saying my tap is four and you know my curve is U2, or U1 and my time dial is, you know, six, right? And so I, I, I put them in this way because now these are, are variables. I can build my test plan based on functions using these variables. And so I can copy and paste this whole test plan. And every step that I do, every like test step, I call out this variable. If I change to this variable in the protection settings tab, it updates it everywhere else in the test plan. So I only have one spot that this actual digit is here, that this actual number is here. Uh, and then my whole test plan will be updated if I change the settings or like I go from group one to group two, whatever. So that's a really, really powerful tool. I build all my test plans like this so that I can copy and paste and use the same test plan multiple times. Um, that's really cool. Anyway, so I'm gonna put those in here for like a time over current curve function. And you'll see me do this in future videos with actual like hands-on examples of what we're doing. Um, so we're gonna go from protection settings, now that I've got my curve stuff in here, my, my settings for my curve. And then we're gonna click on protection functions. And we'll see here that it's blank. It's kind of annoying. It's, 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 it's more clicks than it needs to be. Um, and again, this is, for the 99% case, this is how we set this up. If you've got multiple curves stacked on top of each other, we can do some fancy stuff. Again, maybe I'll make a video. Right now, we're gonna focus on <laughs> uh, the 99% case. So we've got our protection functions. It brings up a menu, right? We click on add modify functions. Um, we're gonna do overcurrent. This makes life easier. It's, again, the most common case, right? And so you can name the device function. So we'll name this one, I don't know, 51. And then faults, it'll be 51 phase to neutral. I doesn't matter, right? Um, like a, a distance element, you might may name this something else. But for this case, uh, most time over current elements, we're just gonna do it like this. And then Again, it looks sort of blank. We've got like the skeleton of what we need. We have to click this little down arrow again, which that's our, our add function or add line um, button. We're gonna see this all over the place in Protection Suite. 
Uh, so this will be 51 phase, whatever. Whatever we want to call it. We could call it anything. Um, but this is, again, trying to make the most sense. Make it as, as general as possible. So uh, this, oddly enough, uh, if you, on your nameplate, if you select, I don't know, GE uh, in your protection functions, like this will, it'll auto-populate. It generally tries to auto-populate if you do it first. Um, so that's kind of cool. Our auto lookup formula, actually, sorry, this is an, <laughs> the curve that I put in was for an SEL curve. Uh, so if we do this, Anytime you're clicking around on menus and they've got uh, spots for for values for numbers, almost any time you see one of those, I can hit the N equal sign key and put in a value, which is pretty cool, super powerful. So what I want to do is I want to grab these three values. We'll go to our protection functions, and so our our characteristic, that's our our curve shape. I want the curve. Well, I already told it that the value of the curve is what you won. I bring that in. It automatically selects the SEL U1 curve. And so that characteristics is already pulled up. So Protection Suite already does the time over current curve math for you. Protection Suite has the vast, vast majority of curves that you're going to run into. Um, so anyway, that's our SEL U1 curve. And obviously they've got They've got all of them pretty much. We'll go to this next one. This auto populates as the INI, which is based off uh, the device parameters page. We don't, don't worry about that. We're going to hit equal sign key. And then this is going to be our tap, right? So our, our time over current pickup will be our tap. That essentially tells the uh, program where the curve starts. And then our time dial will be, is that what I put in? TD time dial. Um, so those are the, that brings on those things. That's how we can get time over current curve characteristics that we can use later in um, other things. So that's really all I need to say about uh, putting in the settings. You can put in whatever you need. If we go back to our IAC relay, obviously I have my IAC function already built in there when we did that test. So this is a, a previous one that we've already run. Um, here's my settings. Here's my curve. That's all I need to do for my settings. So now let's take a look at some of the other tabs because there are a lot. So we go to our uh, test plan tab. So you can either go from the relay device tab, we go to the test plan sub tab and we can pick this is maintenance or acceptance or whatever whatever test plan we made we can double click this or if there's one already active this third main tab here is going to be the test plans tab and so under our test plan we got a worksheet worksheets are very similar to the settings input that we had earlier um, where we can make functions based off our other settings or other variables things like that um, for whatever reason, if you want to do, I don't know, two times our instantaneous pickup, uh, we would just say two INST. Sure. In our formula bar, we could go instant times two. Boom. It brings up, it like solves this function. And no matter what, if I change my protection settings back on my relay device and protection settings tab, say so if I change this to 35 and I go back to my test plan worksheet, this value has been updated automatically, which is super, super powerful. You can use this for a lot of stuff. You'll definitely see me use this in uh, future future videos, right? Um, so in our test plans tab, the worksheet, everything done in the test plans worksheet is available on every test step. Further in each test step, there's also a worksheet and we can have uh, worksheet variables that are avail available to us in each test step. Now, I don't want to get too far in the weeds about what all of the macros and the individual options for the uh, test steps are. We're going to talk about that in, in, in future videos, how to actually make the individual test plans. Moving forward, um, 
other things that I'm going to talk about. Uh, obviously, the, the top tab, we've got our results and history tab for each step, each test step, right? So we're in our test plan top tab. Each test step that we have, we can select one of these and go to the results and we'll see, hey, it, you know, it passed. These are the, the parameters we had at the time that we ran the test and this is the result that we got. Um, and so you can select a different one, go to the results history and see, oh, hey, the first time we failed it and the second time it passed. Cool. So that's really all you need for the results history tab. That's really helpful if you're like troubleshooting something like, oh, I think I have it wired wrong or, oh, I've got my time dial setting set wrong or something like that. I need to tweak it. You can go back to your results history tab. Generally, you've run a couple tests and you just had something hooked up wrong or like the timing was slightly out of whack or whatever it was. And then you do eventually get it to pass. I try and go through and hit the little X um, to get rid of that history tab just to, you know, brush it under the rug, pretend it never happened. Um, similarly, if you're, if you've made an extra line here, if you've made in anywhere you see that uh, a menu is sort of structured like this, anytime you see a, a line here that you don't necessarily want, you want to get rid of, you want to hit this little red X over here and it'll ask you, do you want to, are you sure you want to delete this? It's irreversible. It's not totally irreversible. If you have a previous copy of it saved, you can open up your previous copy without saving new one. Anyway. Uh, yeah, delete is not reverse for confirm delete. Yes. So we get rid of the thing that we don't want. That's what the little red X is for. If you want to add a new line, hit this, and then you get a context menu popping up telling you, hey, add your new line. Pretty basic. Uh, I say it's, it's basic for me because I've been doing it for 10 years. It might, it's probably not, it's not the most intuitive software. I'll admit that. Anyway, moving on. Um, if you don't want that, say like I've got a whole bunch of these uh tests and i want to get rid of a bunch of them and i don't want to hit you know Ooh, this is not delete. i don't have to confirm that every time you can actually go preferences and uh uncheck this guy and we'll go back here and now i can just delete them with impunity and hope that i don't screw up i generally leave that checked just because i don't want to accidentally delete you know good results or a good test plan or something like that yeah let's talk about let's talk about uh printing reports Okay, so number one, right off the bat, um, there's a couple things up here. When you're selecting, whether you're selecting one relay, in this case, I've, I've only got one relay. I've, I've only got one file open. Let's say if I'm doing a project and I've got a whole bunch of these, I've got you know IACs for A, B, and C phase, or maybe I've got a whole bunch of circuits, or I'm doing a whole substation and I want to print all of those relays as one report, the way that we do that, like I said, in this case, I have opened this file. I have opened my IAC PSX file, right? And then I navigated to the reports page. It will only show me that one relay, the only results from that one PSX file. It's typically not the way that I want to print my reports if I'm doing a large project. So we're going to go files, and in my case, I have to include subfolders, and then I've got three relay files here. I can select two. I just uh, show you on the keyboard. I'm holding shift, and then I click here, or if I click on the top one, hold shift, click to the bottom. That'll highlight however many you've you know selected. It's just like selecting stuff in the file explorer on Windows. Um, in this case, I want this one, BE150, 51B, and this IAC. From the files main tab, I can select multiple PSX files. And then we're going to come over here to the top right and click reports. And that skips me over to the report tab with two or more multiple devices selected. That's how you would do that. Um, and now we see in this case, uh, in one of my videos, I fail and I, uh, a Basler BE150, or BE150, 51. Um, so we can see our, our uh, test plans and our uh, actual individual tests that failed, right? So we can see all that stuff and say I didn't want to show or I didn't want to print the report with the ones that failed. I can uncheck the test runs that failed or uncheck my notes or uncheck ones that we didn't run for whatever reason, right? 
Um, so that's kind of nice. You can select what goes where. There's a couple other ways that we can customize this. So if you're doing like a hundred some odd relays uh, and you don't need all of the details for all of the relays, you can do the pass fail summary and that'll pretty much just print out a list of the relays, which ones passed and which ones failed. I typically stay away from that. As a third party needed testing relay guy, I, uh, my customers generally want a little bit more information than that. Uh, and it's, it's way better to, you know, baffle them with way more information than they actually need than it is to give them too little information. So, uh, what I typically do is I'll go to test details and then you can select the content. Um, I don't have another way to share this like report detail template. So pause now if you're, if you're doing this on protection suite, uh, set yours up the same way and you'll get pretty good reports uh, that come out right out of the software. So we're going to check device summary. Uh, for whatever reason, I think when you install it new, it defaults to like just some of the stuff and you don't actually get the results. It's kind of weird. So you actually have to check these and then make sure that you've checked what you want. So we do device nameplate. Uh, I always print the settings unless I've just got like a massive like 100 pages of settings like we're pulling a 387 or something like that. Um, the instrument used, that's like the serial number and the calibration date. Uh, test plan pass fail summary. So this is, again, it's a list of what tests passed and failed. And then we'll do uh, test results table results plot and then I show the tolerance so those are those are all the boxes that I check and that gives us I think the cleanest reports with the most relevant information if that makes sense um, the report title so this is the top line of the report that actually it spits out on the PDF um, so we'll call this I don't know bench tested relays uh, one more thing before we hit print we're going to go to report styling. Uh, if you work for a third party testing agency, you probably have a logo. <laughs> uh, don't print your reports off with the default Doble logo. I've so many techs do it and their reports just, they've got Doble on like a million pages. Uh, same thing with if you're doing something in DTA, uh, testing transformers, replace the Doble logo with your company logo. Don't be a, don't be a pedestrian. Um, so we're, we're going to put in my logo and I need to select all files. I think we'll go with this nice one with the Navy background. So now on the top page of the report, it's going to have my logo instead of the, uh, Doble logo for advertising, right? And then we're going to go, uh, print to PDF. And this actually takes a second. I'm not totally sure why. So we're going to do, I don't know, sample or here bench tested relays report Jesus wish I could type it takes a second but it will pull in you can also print this to word if it's something that you think you're gonna to need to edit uh, after the fact after it prints out um, you can print it to a word docx file whatever it is docx file so you can print this to word so you can edit them later I typically just go straight to PDF I've done this a bajillion times and I know what I'm looking for so I, I get them set up right the first time uh, but here we go so there's my logo the test tech tips on Navy logo that's what we named the report if you were at a substation you would set that to you know substation number six or wherever the heck you're at uh, so our overall device summary for this device is uh, this one BE 150 51 B 107 failed look at that um, one thing that I don't like, so on our, our test summary, if a line fails, the fa the word fail is in black, but the word pass is in green. Like, you'd think fail would be in red. I don't know why they do it that way. Anyway, it's it's worth noting. You you have to make it obvious to your customer that, you know, a, a test failed. Um, so this is pretty cool. Obviously, that, that test results plot with the tolerance, this is what that's showing. It's really nice to have that. It's 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 good for your customers to be able to like visualize what the relay is actually doing. The last thing that I want to talk about, this video is getting long enough. The last thing that I want to talk about is the control panel. So, uh, number one, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's look at the sources tab. We'll see here that this black bar has the ground logo on it. Every single one of these P 
pins goes straight back to literally the ground pin on the 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 power plug in protect suite we can see that the uh, default configuration here is three voltages and three currents ia ib ic and we'll see that these bottom ones uh, on the sources tab are grayed out right if i need four voltages and four currents i just need like a vn I can select this like default tab thing and that'll automatically turn on this one. This is my VN tab and now I have an IN tab uh, over here. So I now have four current channels. You'll notice that I still have the same number of ground returns. It doesn't necessarily matter. Like the current that comes out of IA does not need to go into this uh, ground pin. You could have IA, IB, IC all return into this pin or this pin or this pin. It doesn't necessarily matter, but uh, just be aware that all of the current that leaves, all the current that leaves these have to go back in the ground row. All of the, the voltage references should be referenced off of this um, ground row here. You can mix and match where the ground returns are. Uh, we'll talk about this in future videos, but um, just be aware, black row is all the way common, all the way across. Voltages will come out here. Currents will come out here. Um, for most of our test macros, the selection is going to be, like the, the range selection for our current and voltage outputs is going to be automatic. Uh, so it's 150 VA, that's volt amps, that's like apparent power. That tells you how much like burden you can push this 75 volts through. So if you've got a, sorry, like a 69.3 volt uh, secondary output, you see our range right here, 75 volts for VA. If I need to go up to 120 volts on this terminal, we click 150. Oh, but this terminal I need 200 volts out of. Well, I'm going to click 300. And now I have increased my maximum range. If I'm using, they're, they're sort of ganged up. So like this and this are on the same like output card, if you can think of it that way. This one and this one are on the same output card. This one and this one are on the same output card. So VA, because nothing is enabled over here, I can go up to 300 uh, VA output or 300 volts at 150 VA output. On IC, well, I have IN enabled, right? So on my VC channel, I can go up to 150 volts at half the VA. It does limit me a little bit when I've got multiple uh, multiple channels on the same like card, the same analog output card, essentially, if that's one way to think of it. And we have the same issue, uh, the same limiting issue on our currents. So the max output on each of these the max continuous output allegedly for these is like 30 amps continuous i tend to go way under that i just don't want to burn up my <laughs> current outputs or burn up my wires or anything like that so if i'm going to run this for you know more than a couple seconds um, i generally try and keep it under 30 amps um if you need a whole lot of current for like a like a 50 element, we're going to hit the instantaneous overcurrent really hard. We can actually select on any one of these um, transient ranges. So we'll see it's it automatically tells us it, it changes the name of it to TA uh, transient A instead of IA, right? Because it's a it, it operates in a totally different way. It'll run 30 amps essentially continuous or 60 amps for a very brief period and i don't actually remember how long that brief period is but i try really hard to keep it short like under under a quarter second like 15 cycles is really as hard as i would as long as i would push that at, at 60 amps so running out of a single channel and this is on our control panel here running current out of a single channel Gotta connect to my unit here. Running out of a single channel. So we're hooked up on IA, right? 
I'm going to come out on the red terminal on top, out of my IA, and then return. And I can return to any terminal here on this black bar. It's all ground. It's all, you know, straight to the straight to the turn. We'll stick it here just so we can see everything. The way that I would do that is we're going to go, I don't know, one amp, right? I need to check this box to enable the output. Or if I've got all three of my channels hooked up, I would hit this guy and it would enable all. In this case, I just want to do this one. We're going to click connect, and that's going to start running the control panel, uh, running the double straight from the control panel. The fans spin up a little bit. We hit system output on, and it starts to go. And we can see on our ammeter that deflected a little bit. I think my ammeter's not calibrated very well. I can now select on here where I want that to go. I hit a new, I can select new range for that, and it just goes automatically. So now we're at about three amps. That's pretty cool. We can go to four, hit enter, and that'll deflect up to four. Wow, so cool. It does exactly what you tell it to. So uh, the control panel is really good for doing like individual things really, really quickly. You don't have to think about it too much. I just need to, you know, turn it on, push some voltage, push some current, um, and that, that'll, it'll just go. It works great. I love it. Say I've got a relay like this uh, SCL751 here that I need to power up for testing. Well, I don't want to go to one of these voltage sources, one of these variable voltage sources, and have to turn that on with like a, a pre-fault step every time. I want to have DC on all the time to act as my power supply. Sometimes you're just in a situation where you need to have stuff powered on and you don't have a power supply. Well, number one, you're a relay tech, so you should have a power supply on your truck. Uh, if you don't, you can use the Doble as a power supply. So it's got a battery simulator, so we can set it to whatever voltage we need. Step number one of any relay test is either RTFM or look on the look on the manual or look on the uh, nameplate sticker and figure out what the uh, supply voltage is. In this case, it's uh, 110 to 250 volts DC. So I'll need to put DC onto these two terminals. I can use the Doble as my power supply. So what, what I do is I go 110 right there. And just like that, I click the one. It's like a digital one. <laughs> I click that. And look at that, I got 110 volts. If I need to change this, oh no, now I'm working on something that's got a 48 volt trip circuit. We set that to 48. Boom. 48 volts. And that is, uh, it's a pretty beefy DC voltage output. So this will power up uh, trip circuits. You can run trip coils with it. I wouldn't do too much with it, but it will definitely power up your uh, your DC inputs, your, your digital inputs. It'll definitely power up your uh, relay power supplies. So one of the most important things that I need to cover uh, and I think I skipped by this. I'm shooting this completely out of order. One of the most important things that we need to be able to do is talk reliably to the test set. I need my software, the Protection Suite software, to talk reliably to the uh, the Doble. There is, on most versions of the Doble, a USB port. Don't use the USB port. It's, uh, it's definitely given me issues in the past. They don't run super fast. If you're doing like a big, long state sim test or... Uh, doing like multiple things one after another. Sometimes the, the like the communications buffer in the USB just it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't send it doesn't send information fast enough. Um, USBs it is the the bottleneck is the USB. It's it's not the software and it's not the test set. I always 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 recommend using a LAN connection. It's just it's a lot faster. So what we need to do right when your relay boots or your uh, right when your Doble boots up and you're not connected to it yet, you will get an IP address on here, bottom right. So our IP address for this unit is 10131. I need to put that address, 10131, in right here on my instrument connections page. We'll hit verify, and I'm unplugged. So that'll drop out, it won't work. Why am I so fucking bad at this? So we put the IP address of 
the unit of the, the test set in right here. So 10, 1, 3, 1. There's a pretty good chance that when you go to hit connect, it's going to say failed because your network adapter isn't set up correctly. You need to be on the same uh, network, the same subnet as this address, as the address of the unit. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go network adapter options. Manage network adapter options. So we're going to come to our uh, advanced network settings or our network adapter options. If you're in Windows 10, we're going to click more adapter options. I'm in Windows 11. Uh, we're going to go to TCP IPv4. Use the following IP address. I have to manually set my static IP address to be on the same subnet. So the first three octets are the same as the one on my test set. So that is 10.1.3, and then I need something else. It could be literally anything else. It could be uh, 222 or 6 or 69. Doesn't really matter. It just has the last digit, the last octet has to be different, and the first three have to be the same. And then for our subnet mask, we're going to do 255, 255, 255, and we're going to connect to it right off the bat. So we're on the same network. I've got the IP address for my Doble plugged in right here. We're gonna click the verify F6X connection. Should work. It says status okay. That's really all we need to know. We're connected to this guy and we're not gonna have any, uh, any like bandwidth issues, any latency, anything like that connected over um, our ethernet connection, our LAN connection. If for whatever reason you have a field service laptop that doesn't have an ethernet port, I would definitely recommend picking up one of these guys. This is a uh, StarTech.com USB 3.0 to uh, gigabit ethernet adapter. It just plugs right in the USB 3.0 port on your laptop. Mwah, works perfect, never had any issues with it. Um, if for whatever reason you just don't have an ethernet cable, you don't have access to one of these little adapters, something like that, stranded out in the field and all you've got is a USB cable. You could totally use USB. Um, just click the serial port and then uh, find the USB port that you're actually connected to the unit with uh, in your device manager. All right, guys, so that's about it for uh, the, the, the bare bones of Protection Suite. This is like the, the bare minimum that you need to uh, get connected to something and start pushing current into like a meter or whatever. Uh, the next couple of videos that are going to be posted, I'm going to be showing you how to actually test relays and get real results and get real reports out of real relays. So uh, <laughs> definitely stay tuned for that. Get subscribed. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I, I'm sure I, I missed a lot of things in this video. We're going to cover them all in the next couple of videos. Do all the do all the YouTube stuff. Like, comment, share, subscribe. It really helps me out. I'm just, you know, starting the channel, trying to trying to grow this and share as much information as I can. So it really encourages me and helps me out. Um, yeah, thanks. And we'll see you on the next one.